What's up guys and welcome back to Tech Plan. Today we're going to be talking about how to actually use a moss pole. Let's check it out. All right, so before I show you the right way, I'm going to show you what I see a lot of times, which in my opinion is the wrong way and a very big waste of an expensive moss pole or really any moss pole. And more importantly, it actually sets you back quite a bit if you do it this way. So many times I see people with sort of a gangly plant and then they decide they're going to use a moss pole and they're going to attach their, their plant that's a little overgrown to the moss pole. So what do they do? They take the long vine and they hold it as far as they can up the moss pole and then they strap it to the pole like every few inches all the way up. Now that is not the actual issue, the whole strapping it along the pole. However, the big issue is it's really going to do nothing for your plant. You've basically spent a lot of money on a nice moss pole or spent a lot of time making a nice moss pole only for it to really be just a trellis. So when you take your brand new like 24 inch moss pole and you just uh, adhere the old vine all along the way and then you leave the growth tip pretty much at the top like you can see here, it's not going to feel supported at the growth tip and it's never going to try and put out those like very mature leaves. So you're really just hurting yourself when you do it this way. Now if you just want to get the plants off the floor, obviously this is a great way to do so. But if you're going for that more mature leaf, you're not going to get what you want. So here's my recommendation. If you've got a long plant, usually a lot of these more stringy ones I see, they're quite a bit flexible. And even if they're not, I would even suggest laying your um, original pot down and taking that growth tip and trying to adhere it to a new pot with a moss pole right at the very base of it. And when you actually attach it to the pole, you're going to look for where those main roots come out and you're really going to try and get that mushed up against the pole really nice and tight so that way it can start rooting in there and start its journey adhering to the pole. Once that starts doing it, that growth point is going to get that sensation. I don't really know how else to describe it, but it, it understands that it's very secure. It feels itself rooting in and then it's going to start making bigger, larger leaves and thicker um, vines and it's going to really get big quick. And the best part about this is you're going to end up having a lot of moss pole for it to grow out on. It's a real shame if you were to already strap the vine maybe like 12 inches or 15 inches high, you're kind of limiting the amount of time you have before you have to chop and prop the, the top cutting, if that makes any sense. Here's a real life example at this point. If we go into my plant room, you can see I've got a Monstera dubia down, or dubia, 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 I forget. Anyways, it's in the bottom corner here of my aquarium stand. Now you can see it's only about 12 inches up. And it's already starting to enlarge rather quickly. It's adhered really nice. I literally just used some scotch tape and it loved it. But if you look at the original pot, you can see there's tons of growth down there. And if I take the time to actually like pull it out and untangle everything, you can see it's almost like two to three feet long of just leaves. So imagine if I were to just strap that whole thing to the aquarium stand, I would probably only have like 24 inches for this thing to grow out until it's hitting the ceiling. But the fact that I started at the way bottom, ignoring all that previous growth, means I'm going to get the whole like 72 inches, 78 inches of growth, giving the dubia a lot more time to get a lot bigger before I have to like traumatize it, cut it, and restart over. So that is what I'm trying to get at. I hope this real life example really like drives home what I'm getting at. Here's another instance as well with the giant pothos. So I tried repotting it a while back and it's actually not doing so good. You can see that the leaves are starting to get smaller now. It's starting to actually regress. Originally it was getting massive and that's when it was on the first moss pole really rooting in nicely. But you can see now that since it's loose and lost its grab, the growth tip doesn't feel secure and it doesn't matter that it's leaning up against this pole, it's already starting to revert. So I have to address this one quickly. Well guys, that pretty much sums up this video. I hope it makes sense. If your goal here is to just get your plants off the ground, then definitely go with something cheaper, almost like a trellis, because that'll work just the same. If you're gonna try and get bigger leaves like you can do with most aeroids, then I promise you if you start at the base, you're gonna see much better results over time. And it's not gonna eat up your like a lot of your vertical space, because that's the really hard thing to have in indoor spaces is vertical space because we have ceilings. So I promise you, you can maximize your growth if you start at the base. You'll love it. It's gonna just be so much better than starting like way up at the top and wasting like 24 inches, 12 inches. Anything honestly is a waste in my opinion. You're just, it's not gonna help your plant in any way. It's that growth point and they need to start really adhering. It's gotta feel secure and then it'll get big. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, may your plants go strong and healthy. I'll see you next time.